Hello there, Jose Rodriguez once again. As you can see in the background is my R2000 that I used to have sitting on a uh, small movable bench. Had to move it out of the way to make room for this baby. The Canon Pixma Pro 100. In this video, which will probably be several parts, I'm going to cover basic setup. As you can see, I've already taken it out of the box. Uh, you don't need to see me unboxing this beast. I'm sure everyone knows how to unbox a printer. But we're going to go through the preparation of removing all of the little tape bits, installing the print head, installing the cartridges, and then installing the driver onto the computer. I'm going to attempt to set it up for Wi-Fi, although I will be ready to use USB if that setup goes down south, which has been known to happen. Though we'll cross our fingers and hope that everything turns out okay. All right, so let's get to it. And here you can see the pack of goodies that comes with the printer. We have eight CLI 42 cartridges. And these are structurally identical to the CLI 8s that the Canon Pro 9000 Mark II utilizes. The only difference is, of course, the chip which at this time it is unresettable. There's one workaround that you can utilize. In fact, these are refilled exactly the same way that the 9000 Mark II carts are refilled. The only problem is we cannot reset the chip as of yet. So we can use a method of uh, disabling the ink monitoring system and continue to use these carts. It's a little bit uh, an orthodox method, but it's the only option we currently have. We have here the instructions, which for a change I will actually read them. Software discs, there's a couple of discs of some software and possibly some utilities. Now I have heard down the grapevine that the original set of ICC profiles that was included on whatever version driver this happens to be, I'm going to have to go to the uh, Canon site and compare the two versions. This is a uh, 1.0, so I'm sure there's a new one I've heard, has redone ICC profiles. Apparently there was a problem with the original ones. That may affect some people, that may not affect some people, but I will look into that for all of you. Of course the heart of the printer is the print head. This is a, of course, a Canon print head, so it is thermal in nature. You have to be very careful with it. In fact, because we're going to disable the ink monitoring system, we have to make darn sure that we never, never, ever let the cards run dry. In fact, we must refill them before they reach, say, to be safe, uh, about a third uh, from empty. That would be uh, the best option, and you would have to vi visualize that uh, by popping off the card that mostly uh, uh, goes empty, which is probably going to be the lighter blacks, they get used up quite a bit higher rate than the other colors are. I'm going to show you later on a method that I have devised to allow us to determine when we should check the cartridges for need to refill. And basically, this will involve figuring out um, some square footage and that sort of thing. But a more on that later. We have a power cord, of course. Oh, no, this is a USB, little shorty one. I'm not going to use it. I have a 10-footer waiting in case I need to go the USB route. Uh, although this is uh, Wi-Fi. And, of course, the power cable. And we have a CD-DVD disc holder if we wish to print discs. Now I have a Primera Bravo 2 automated disc printer so I will not be using this. Um, any owners of a Epson Artisan series know how superior that system is because the tray is built into the printer. There's no way you're going to misalign anything. Even though these white areas are used as sensing um, 
spots for the uh, printer positioning sensors uh, it's still a lot easier and a lot more accurate to use just a simple artisan uh, all-in-one printer to print your uh, DVDs or CDs okay so now that we have gone over all the contents let's go ahead and start removing all of this uh, tape and start digging into the inside of the printer okay so now I've opened up the little instruction book packet and it's extremely sparse I'm gonna have to download and hopefully a more um, thorough instruction book or maybe a PDF will be included with the uh, disk itself this is a uh, Mac OS which I will not be using so off to the side it goes uh, those of you who do use my Mac OS I suggest you download the latest driver from the actual Canon site and none and not use the Macintosh download uh, utility for uh, drivers uh, that's been you know sort of the experience that I have uh, amassed by reading so many posts from people using the Mac OS and Canon printers so let's go ahead and start opening this baby and the first thing I'm presented with is this piece of plastic and a block of styrofoam that holds or prevents the print carriage from bouncing around while being shipped and if you ever think that UPS or DHL or any other companies is uh, gentle with your packages don't believe it my son works for them so as you can see we have orange tape everywhere one of the main reasons for something jamming during the time you are trying to run a test print is because you forgot to remove some of that tape somewhere now I have to uh, say that I bought this printer from a Craigslist uh, poster and he had already opened the box so I think most of the tape was already removed the reason he sold it is because it basically did not fit on his printing desk that he had in mind so I'm looking in the back to make sure there's no other tape or anything that's going to uh, cause a head crash when I try to restart this I'm going to show you the back of the or the the back feed loader we have a regular top loader as you can see that acts uh, as any other printer would, would act it's rather neat that it prints right down the middle of the print path rather than to the right um, if we're just going to talk about Canon Pro series the Pro 900 9500 everything printed from the right to the left in other words so if you wanted to do a 4x6 you had to push it over to the right and adjust one single adjustment uh, side adjustment this one apparently is different it works from the middle and apparently it will do four inches approximately up to 13 same thing in the rear we have the same thing it's rather difficult to see but as you can see it operates in the same manner the only difference is I believe this only takes what looks to me at this point about an 8 inch max or 8.5 inch max width so you're not going to be running a little 4x6's out of the uh, back loader there is also a what appears to be a straight path front loader I'm gonna have to look at the PDF that hopefully comes with a CD or I'll just download the uh, large manual from Canon and see what this is all about how to utilize it I did not notice in the back whether there was a corresponding uh, slot for the for a straight path 
as some printers tend to have. I think the, uh, I know the 3000, the R3000s have a straight path for loading thick paper and card type stock. But anyway, this is something that I, to tell you the honest truth, I never ever use on my printers. I will use the rear feeder and I will use the top feeder and that's basically as far as I go. Uh, none of my papers exceed more than uh, 300 grams uh, weight so they all feed rather well through those two paper paths. Alright in the next segment I'm going to go ahead and power up the printer. I'm going to lift the cover up. I'm going to lower the tray and the empty carriage will position itself in the middle. I will then install the print head and allow it to be recognized by the printer. Once that occurs I will start loading all of the ink cartridges one by one and once everything is loaded I'm going to go ahead and install the printer driver which I will download from Canon. I'm not going to utilize this one. I'm going to download their newest driver for this particular printer model. All right, so see you in a bit. Okay, so I went ahead and downloaded the PDF instruction booklet and it's really no better than this one. Basically, it's a printing guide. It doesn't really tell you much about how to uh, install the printer. So I already know how to do it because I've done many Canons before this one. But if you're a first time Canon user, you would want to follow these instructions. And as you saw earlier, I went ahead and took everything that I could find that had to do with tape, removed the carriage stop that came with the uh, printer, that, that, that styrofoam block that was located in the middle here. And now we're at step number four, which indicates that we should plug it into some power. And we're going to do that right now. I'm going to do this real time so that you can see what I'm doing. The plug is located on the lower um, left side of the printer as you're looking at it from the front. Alright, so now we're going to power up the printer. As indicated here in section 4. Next, we will lift the two lids. It's going to give us an alarm that basically says, hey, there's no head installed in this printer. We'll wait for that to occur. And then open up the lid, which will then move the print carriage to the center position, which is the position used to install the head and install the ink cartridges. This is taking a little bit of time. I'll just let it run. I want to do this real time so you know what to expect exactly. I'm not going to edit out any of this lengthy process. Okay, so we have now the Wi-Fi has been activated. We did not get an alarm. The instructions actually claim that there would be an alarm or some kind of a warning light. All right, so now you can see that the printer carriage has moved to the central position. So we're going to go ahead and... Uh, get our print head okay and here we have the print carriage in the middle position this rectangular uh, unit here that has the this component that has all of those little connectors is what actually talks to the printhead. 
and communicates with it. We're going to go ahead and open up the container that has the printhead and carefully remove the unit from the package. Now, Canon printheads, since they are user installed, come loaded with a liquid or transport liquid or fluid. So we're going to go ahead and take the protective cover from the bottom of the printer head, like so. And you can see the bottom of the print head. You can see the part that mates with those pins located where I showed you. Now we're going to go ahead and lift the lid up and carefully we will insert the print head in position like so. And it basically fits just like that. Then you're going to bring this back down and lock it. Now we can go ahead and install all of the ink cartridges. I spent a few minutes lining up my carts by color so that they match the order in which they are to be installed. And I'm going to start from the right toward the left. So cyan, cyan, light gray, photomagenta, gray black, yellow, cyan, and magenta. So we'll go ahead and do the first one. And then after that, really, you don't need to watch me install all of these cards. I'm going to go ahead and just show you how to pop one in and uh, we'll uh, do the rest off camera. One thing I have to um, bring up is that these carts are filled to the very top. Now those of you who refill uh, Canon carts may have heard quite often that you're not supposed to fill them maybe past three quarters on the liquid reservoir side. These carts apparently were filled by vacuum and they are filled, I mean there's just a little air bubble visible on the uh, liquid side. Uh, of course what you don't want to do is to have that sponge completely saturated because that will literally um, bring liquid ink into the air maze and will give you an airlock basically so you don't want to do that but from new yeah they're filled all the way to the top so we'll just snap off the bottom and insert the first card in position. You see that the red light goes on. We'll do this with the rest of them. I'll just do one more and then I'll do the rest off camera and I'll come back when they're all installed before I close the lid so that you will see it go into the purging cycle which is going to load ink into the print head and get it ready to do our first job which will be a head alignment. So we'll see you in a few few minutes. I'll have all of these rest of these cars installed. Okay now we're gonna put the last one in the magenta and we are done. I'm gonna proceed to close the lid and allow it to do its thing. I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and prepare some paper while it is still charging. I'm going to let it run. That way you can time how long the charge actually takes. That way you get a, an actual real-time idea. Meanwhile, the noise you will hear is me cleaning up the mess I just made on the floor. Now very likely if this is like any other printer, the initiation process will use up quite a bit of ink. 
this ink is not totally lost. Some of it is used to prime the head, but some of it is of course used to be pushed through the head itself to make sure that no air exists in any of its nozzles. So that goes into the waste ink pads. Subsequent um, replacements of ink, you will be able to take advantage of the uh, complete volume of ink that's uh, in each cartridge. Only the first time you initiate the printer will it actually waste some ink. The next step we will perform will be the installation of the driver and then we'll do our head alignment and once that's completed we are done. We can begin to print. So we are now in step number five which ends the basic installation procedure of the printer it has done the purging cycle or initiation cycle it is ready to be installed now at the computer level that didn't take very long okay now we're back at the uh, computer I'm going to show you something that the pro versions of Canon printers will install for you and I'll show you that both of the uh, 900 and 9500 have it you have the regular driver which is for 8-bit files and then you have a XPS driver XPS this driver allows you to print from software like Lightroom um, Photoshop which allows you to print um, directly from 16-bit files which will improve your gradations and your tonalities somewhat. This It, it smooths them out. It actually prevents uh, possible banding that may occur on 8-bit files. So say for instance you're working directly from uh, you see right here the same thing directly from a raw file in Lightroom in you want to now print, well the Canon drivers allow you to print in full 16-bit but you must install both drivers now with the Pro 9000 and 9500 it installed both of them automatically but that is not the case with the uh, Canon Pro 100 you must install this one and you must install this one so let's go ahead and proceed as you can see in this folder here I have every uh, application and piece of software that I thought I would need and we'll begin with the driver and then we'll proceed with others some of the uh, printing applications that you get now you will be presented by this diagram here we're gonna go ahead and hit next and you gotta bear with me this is the first time I've installed a Pro 100 so we'll have to see what happens I'm gonna to attempt to install it using the Wi-Fi option it is telling me select this option when using the printer by connecting it to the computer with a USB cable after software installation the procedure to connect your computer with the printer appears click USB connection then wait until the next screen appears or select this option when you are using the printer with a computer over your network LAN when we're using the printer with other computers so it is showing me a Wi-Fi type connection and we'll go ahead and try it we'll cross our fingers it says wired connection which would be you would use a CAT6 or CAT5 network cable and wireless we're gonna go ahead with wireless at this point and hopefully we will be able to directly connect to the printer 
automatically. It says connect to the network and wireless setup using the USB cable. So it looks like I'm going to have to install the USB cable temporarily and that's extremely similar to um, the Artisan series. There's another method here. I really don't know too much about wireless type technology. So I'm going to go ahead and play it safe and use this one. So I'll be back in a few seconds. Okay, I'm back now. Um, by the way, the USB port is on the rear right lower side. Power plug is on the rear left lower side. Alright, so let's go ahead and uh, go for broke here. It says that it's going to take somewhere between 5 and 10 minutes. Hopefully not. So let's go ahead and hit next. I'm going to read this really quick. Yeah, we're done. And yes. And it's asking me to allow my firewall, firewall or antivirus software to not reject this installation is it could possibly alert me that is uh, Canon is trying to install the product but I'm gonna permit all and it's gonna go now and install that driver and here is the uh, level of progress it's gonna take about two minutes so I'll go ahead and pause now and come back when it's uh, totally finished Okay, now it's searching for printers on the network. It says use a USB cable to set up a network connection for a new printer. I have done that. Connect the printer and the computer using USB cable, which I have done. It says detection may take some time. When detection is completed, the window closes automatically. Okay. okay I had to actually switch my USB cord normally my printers are all connected to the computer via powered hubs and so now we will go ahead and set up the uh, network connection connecting it directly to the computer did the uh, trick so now I can actually disconnect it once it is done registering with my network. It is still using the um, actual so actual connection. So now it's telling me to disconnect the USB cable that was connected to the printer, which I will do now. And next and complete. Excellent. Okay, that was relatively painless except for that little problem with the uh, USB cord and the hub. Okay, so now there are a multitude of softwares including um, some instruction manuals for certain things. Uh, I believe this is the 16-bit driver. Let me go ahead and begin to load it just to see if indeed it is. Of course you can see all of the very cryptic names almost unrecognized. Yeah, XPS driver and let's see if it allows me to uh, install it without connecting to the USB again. Yeah, sometimes printers connect flawlessly easy. Sometimes they do not. This wasn't too bad. Okay, so I installed it very well. Okay, now comes the applications. What do we have here? Color Management Tool Pro. And I assume all of this stuff is included in the CD, but what I wanted to do was to make sure that I was installing the newest driver, which is the 1.1, whereas the disk only comes with a 1.0. I suppose I could update, uh, but I just wanted to start from fresh. Now we're going to install Canon Print Studio which is the plugin for Photoshop and you have two options you can print 
allowing Photoshop to control color through an ICC profile for your paper and then turning off color management within the Canon Pro 100 driver or you can just use the plugin basically it's a file automate function you load the plugin up and uh, whatever image you had open will appear within the plugin and then you basically choose your layout parameters the paper type and you know all of the different uh, normal parameters and that plugin does a pretty darn good job in producing a fairly fairly neutral print I have never tried this particular one but I look forward to uh, testing it as soon as we are done here loading all of these goodies alright so let's go ahead and go to our devices and printers and see if we can locate our brand new printer it should be right there and it's our default printer for now I'm going to go ahead and uh, look at the printing preferences it's very similar to the uh, old older versions make sure that we have instructions yep that got installed and look at the printer status we have full inks as you can see here alright so let's go ahead and do a printhead alignment I'm going to go ahead actually let's do a nozzle check first and if you have owned a regular Pro 9000 or 9500 it's basically the same thing so I'm not going to go ahead and bore you with showing you a nozzle check I'll just go ahead and do it and uh, then we'll proceed with the head alignment and I'll, I'll take a shot as you can see it's identical to the uh, other two uh, printers so right now it is printing as you can see down here and I'll be back in a few seconds okay and you can see the basic Canon type nozzle check it's perfect go ahead and now do the alignment procedure which is an automatic alignment okay as you saw the nozzle check was perfect so we will go ahead and begin the second operation which is the automatic alignment it says that it will require two sheets and it is I can hear it right now getting ready okay and that's the final alignment sheet so now we can proceed to do a test print basically I'm just going to do the standard test print that the printer driver provides you okay before I go ahead and print a regular test print I'm going to show you some of the utilities that the driver provides you in the maintenance tab we have bottom plate cleaning which prevents plate smudges during printing the roller cleaning executes print roller cleaning for smoother paper feeding power off turns the printer off so you can turn the printer off remotely auto power which allows you to you know the printer to go to sleep quiet settings actually this operates the printer at a much lower noise level especially if you have a baby in the next room and custom settings allows you to select operation options and I'm curious as to what that allows you to do okay ink drying wait time so basically it will delay the advance of the paper after a pass of the head and sometimes apparently there are some papers that require a little bit more drying time between uh, each pass prevents paper abrasion aligns head manually that's if you want to do the manual alignment and this detects a printable disk on the disk tray all right so I'm gonna go ahead and close this a second I'm gonna go back and by the way this one here that has the offline triangle that's the USB connection so if I reconnect it to the computer with the USB this will be uh, activated once again 
all right so let's go ahead and go to printer properties and we'll go ahead and just print a simple test page and we'll go look at it okay so by printing the simple text file which is just the uh, test print that you can print through the uh, printer properties dialog we can determine if everything is working properly and once that is determined then we can proceed to print an image so the next thing we will do is we're gonna print an image using the plugin through Photoshop alright so as you saw the test print printed perfectly I'm gonna go ahead and close this dialog and we'll open up Photoshop hopefully that plugin has been installed otherwise we are in trouble I'm running Photoshop CC or Create Cloud. I have a lot of plugins installed, so it takes a while to check them before it goes ahead and opens up Photoshop. And here we are. Okay, so we'll go ahead and locate something nice to print. And like I said, we're just going to go ahead and uh, try to print through that plug-in. We'll do this. It's a close-up of a uh, headlight on an antique car. I can't even remember what make it was. Okay. So here we are. And this is pretty much ready to print. I'm not going to do anything to this image. Let's see now. This is the... Okay. That's the Easy Photo Print Pro. We are looking for the new one all right well now we know it did not install okay i'm back now i figured out what happened the installation defaulted to a prior version of photoshop cs4 that i still have loaded the reason i have that loaded is because uh, i use a an album creation type software can only work with as high as cs4 so i kept a copy of and all i had to do was copy the uh, Print Studio Pro plugin folder to my Photoshop CC plugin folder and we now have it present. So now what's going to occur is that the plugin will open up and this open image. You must have an image already open within your main Photoshop interface for it to be able to be printed through the plugin. Now there's also a standalone version of it that one can use. And it takes a few minutes. I'm running a quad core but it's not even, it's an older uh, version. This thing is uh, at least five, six years old with only a gig of RAM which it seems like, like a lot if you think back ten years ago but it's really not up to par at this point. Need to upgrade it's telling me that I need to upgrade my 9500 and 9000 to be able to use this plugin but I really don't need to because I use the uh, plugin that's specifically for those printers and besides half the time I uh, actually use color management okay so now let's drink a cup of coffee while this opens up can't believe it takes this long maybe it's just the first time okay now let's see this is the first time I use this so I'm gonna carefully look through all the different parameters it says here bordered one inch border uh, times one I guess that means it's gonna print just one image now I assume if I do this ah good so it allows me to move my image around to position it where I wish to position it and I guess you can do um, scaling on the fly which is not too bad it automatically chose the correct printer I'm gonna go ahead and choose uh, luster and its letter size rear tray I'll pick high now I understand there's a um, 
checkbox if you want to print this as a black and white but we're going to go ahead and try our first print in full color there are layout uh, parameters you can adjust the margins and those who use um, Lightroom may be familiar with this type of uh, adjustment we'll go ahead and leave everything as default for now because I just want to go ahead and see a very quick straight through the printer no color management from Photoshop at all I'm too curious I need to check what that color management is for ah use ICC profile look at that alright we'll leave that as is now and we'll hit print it says starting to print if you want to cancel printing change media type or layout click cancel so it gives you a second chance oh and it is using photo paper pro luster printer profile is on auto because it's gonna load this the ICC for uh, Canon photo pro luster and rendering intent is perceptual so let's go for it okay so we're gonna go ahead and load some of this uh, photo paper pro luster that came with the printer and that's what we will use for our preliminary testing okay about 10 seconds lapse between the episode of sending the print job to the printer the paper is loaded and it's now being printed upon so we will see it emerging in a few minutes by the way my monitor is fully calibrated through an X-Rite color monkey so there there is no problem with the uh, calibration of the monitor it is set to the correct luminance and so on and color I remember we printed it at the highest printing resolution or high so you're gonna get a, a real-time representation of what it takes to print almost a full letter size document the next one we'll print will do using color management from what I have heard from people is that the plugin actually turns off or disables color management within the driver otherwise you have to do it by hand Okay, here's the finished print. To my eye, this appears perfectly neutral, which is what the screen showed me. The bright oranges of the actual tail light is basically right on. So, so far, pretty impressive. Let's go ahead and do a uh, print using color management. Okay, now the normal process to print from a Canon printer begins here. I'm going to, especially if you're going to be printing not using that plugin, you have to go into the driver itself now once you have set up your basic paper type and in this case we're using the photo luster pro photo printing and then we're going to click on color intensity manual adjustment matching and none and that will become our default okay but we want to have our default being letter size so we'll apply and from now on let's get out of that dialog and come back anytime I come back it's gonna be you notice that the color intensity manual adjustment is checked letter size is checked and the pro platinum is not checked let's put it back on luster hit apply 
we'll try that again. Here we go. Pro Luster letter. So I must have changed. Well, I know what happened. I changed it, the parameter from being managed by the printer to being not managed by the printer. And now we're going to allow Photoshop to manage our color. So when we print this, we'll go to the regular printing dialog. It says that the save printer information is not compatible with this version of Photoshop. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. What happens with Photoshop CC is that it allows you to save whatever printing parameter you use. So the next time you print that same particular image, the same settings will pop up. It's quite nice. Now we're going to go ahead and come here and make sure that our parameters are set to normal as we want them to be. Okay, and now we're going to scale to fit media and up here is the most important setting we will perform. The default is printer manages colors. We're going to allow Photoshop to manage colors. And then we're going to look for those particular just installed profiles. All right, let's look for um, Luster. And I really don't know what the number stands for. It might be a quality level setting. But since there is no other Luster profile available, we'll go ahead and pick it. I love the way profiles are named to some undecipherable cryptic names. Wouldn't it be nice if they were just named with you know, normal English? Alright, so we'll hit print. This will be sent to the printer. Now, if I save this image again, do file save, which is going to prompt me to do if I try to close it. Watch. It's going to ask me to save it. It wants me to save the parameters I just sent to the printer. And those will be associated with this particular image. So the next time I print it, if I choose to print it on that same printer, I will not have to make any adjustments whatsoever. It will just remember everything. So let's go ahead to the go to the printer and we'll make a comparison. Alright, we're back at the printer. I just sent that second image that we printed with full color management allowing Photoshop to control color through the ICC profile for the Canon Pro Luster paper. What happens often is that I really have no clue what settings the plugin used because all, all we do is choose the paper type and this time we actually went and chose a specific ICC profile. But as you can see the print emerging so far it looks pretty identical. I printed it so that it's borderless from top to bottom. Only borders are on the uh, right and left edges. But we, we really just want to see whether it has the same color balance as the one printed to the uh, plugin. If it does, then wow, indeed that plugin alone is able to produce uh, damn near perfect pictures. Excuse my French. There might be a slight difference that I can see. I am not working under control lighting. I will have to look at that tomorrow. But so far, it seems to match, at least by my bad eyes, pretty, pretty darn close. And I'll put them side by side for you to be able to uh, see if there's any difference at all. Keep in mind that my lighting is horrible in here. I cannot really control it very well. But this side of the uh, printer is being lit brighter than this side. So the difference in density that you do see is not because of the uh, prints. It's because of the lighting. I'll go ahead and switch them. 
and you see that now this one appears a little bit lighter. But anyway, the color is perfectly matched. I have no complaints whatsoever. Very good. Okay, so the next quick test I'm going to do, I'm going to load a black and white image, one that has been converted to black and white, using the black and white conversion that Photoshop provides. That'll be the proof of the pudding, so they say because this printer is uh, supposedly known for its great black and white. So we'll be back in a few. Okay, here's a black and white portrait of a homeless man. And I'm gonna go ahead and check to make sure that my white point is just below 250, which it is, is that it was at 248. And my black, this black is zero. And that'll be a good test to see how deep a black I can get. And I'm going to go ahead and use the plugin for this one. Because the plugin is supposed to be able to print uh, perfect black and white, according to them. So, Studio Pro. Again, this might take a while to open. That's the last time. This time, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, click on the black and white. Although I I'm willing to bet that if you just send this as normal, it will print perfectly. But I'll do both. I'll do one with the, uh, and it's warning me about that again. I may go ahead and uh, update those drivers because this is going to be annoying. That's what happens when you have over 16 printers installed. Okay. So here is the image. We're going to go ahead and print one just straight through and then I'll do another one with the uh, print black and white photo box checked so I'll go ahead and do that now and then we'll send a second one with this checked let's see if there's anything else I need to look at we'll close up some of these and nothing else changes so I'll go ahead and print another one with that box checked and I'll leave this open and then walk over to the printer and we'll check it out now I probably should have uh, printed a test print one of those um, collages of uh, different images containing different uh, parameters and a gray ramp And right off the bat, I'm seeing a slight color cast. So we will see what the black and white button that I checked does. It's quite beautiful though, <laughs> even with a slight uh, color cast. We'll see what the skin tones look like in a second. One thing I have to say though is that it really blows the cannon. 9000 Mark II out of the water. We'll put this down and we'll examine it after the second print is finished printing. And I know there's a way to adjust the tonality. It's sort of like a, an advanced black and white a mode uh, such as used on the uh, 3800, 3880 of Epson and R3000 and I believe also the R2880. In fact most of the K3 type printers will have an advanced black and white mode. I have to delve into the um, plug-in a little bit deeper to uh, discover some of these adjustments. Okay, and here comes the second print. Even with a color cast, uh, the video does it no justice whatsoever. It is stunning. The, the gradations of the skin tones, you know, the man's super weathered face, the, the wrinkles on the hands, the tonalities on the fingers are just amazing. Okay, here comes the second one which has been printed using the 
black or white tick box. I'm going to, um, after we do this basic uh, printing, I'm going to go ahead and use some of the um, downloadable profiles from other paper manufacturers such as Red River and Ink Press. Okay, now that I have them aligned side by side and they have dried for a while, they actually look quite neutral. Go ahead and pan over to the one on the left. This is the one I did through the straight plug-in. And this is the one I did using the black and white option inside the plug-in. Again, the video does not do it justice. You have to visually see this. This black and white image is some of the best I've ever seen. Um, in par with my 3800 with OEM inks, I'm telling you. So it's uh, extremely exciting for me to be able to um, see a dye-based printer produce black and white such as these. The only other dye option is the one I'm using on my 3800. I have two of them, by the way. One is running on OEM, one is running on uh, John Cone dye base K3 inks, which is identical to the same color set that's you know known as the Epson K3 um, ink set, pigment insect, except is actually dye based, and that printer with that dye base can probably perform as close to this as I can imagine. I doubt that it will surpass it. This is this is lovely. The detail is amazing. As you can see. Alright, so I'm going to leave you now. Uh, the next time we meet I'm going to go ahead and test some other profiles especially the ones that were produced for the precision color ink set that as at this point is the only ink set available for this type of uh, printer and again we have to rely on disabling the ink monitoring system and again there's there's some dangers involved with that uh, unfortunately, you know, but that's the only way we can refill and continue printing with this fine printer at a very, very reasonable price, almost one-tenth what the uh, OEM would cost. The developer has performed extensive testing at this to this date, and they pretty much match OEM. I'll be back again soon in the next section to test those other papers with corresponding ICC profiles.